This week's video is about protein skimmers. I'm gonna talk about how I've been using mine for many years, as well as this brand new one that just arrived today from Nios. They sent it out to me to let me do a product review. So sure, I'd love to say I get to keep this, but I think I'm gonna to get to try it for a couple of months. And I'll be giving you guys feedback over time about how I feel about this skimmer on my reef. A protein skimmer is a device that's used to remove organics from the water. Basically, it depends on the size of your tank. For mine, I need a huge acrylic container or a cylinder that is filled up with air bubbles and then all the dirt, the fish waste, the coral expilations, the uh, spawning events that happen. All of that is then trapped within the body of the skimmer and it affixes itself to air bubbles. The water rises up inside the chamber and collects into the top called a collection cup. So let me show you what mine looks like and that way we can kind of continue this discussion. So here is my protein skimmer. There's the body. You can see it filled up with white bubbles. And there is the neck. And then there's the collection cup. I left it dirty because I wanted you to see what it looks like in real life. Now, once I clean it up, it'll change things, of course. But I wanted you to kind of see it operating normally. Let's zoom in. If you look closely, you'll see that there are some really big bubbles inside the neck right now. I actually prefer when the bubbles are really, really fine. The smaller the bubbles, the more oxygen is in the water there's more surface area for the dirt to stick to. Now, unfortunately, the front side of the neck that you're looking at is dirty, so it's kind of obscuring our view a little bit. And you can see the collection cup. It's dirty, but it's empty. The reason it's empty is because I have a hose that leads down to a waste collector. So let me pan down for you. This is my waste collector, and it holds about a gallon and a half of skimmate. Inside that waste collector, I modified this to work with my system and it has a float switch in there and the float switch when it rises due to all the liquid in the container shuts off one of the pumps on the skimmer which turns the skimmer off this prevents the skimmer from overflowing and sending needless amounts of water down the drain or across the floor now something else i want to show you if you look at the very top of the collection cup way up here see that little motor that's from a vast marine and they make what's called a skimmer swabby and what this motor does is eight times a day for about two minutes, it runs a squeegee along the inside of the neck of the skimmer to keep it nice and clean. If you've had a protein skimmer before, you've seen how that gets really, really gunked up. And the thicker that sludge is on the inside of the neck, the less effective your skimmer is. It's really important to keep this clean. Before I owned the skimmer Swabby, I would take off the collection cup and clean the neck every single day. And that was a really good habit because it got all the organics out of my system quickly. But it was a lot of work too, and I just put up with it because it's part of taking care of my reef. But using the Swabby has made my life so much easier. I can take off the collection cup, which includes that neck section right here. And that comes off on that big collar, and I can clean it about once a week. The waste collector, I empty it as needed. If it fills up quickly one day because of some crazy weather change, that's fine. I'll just dump it out and reset. This is a very nice system that I've been using now for, well, I've had the skimmer for 11 years and I've had the uh, skimmer swabby for probably about three or four years. I've had to replace the motor on it two or three times, but it was money well spent. It makes my life so much easier. And I actually am a little concerned about running a different skimmer without the swabby. I think I'd want to install it on whatever skimmer I own in the future. I'm gonna go ahead and take off that collection cup off of there and clean it up so we can get a better view of what's going on. cup is off I need to go ahead and clean the inside of the body near the top this area right here at the top it's kind of brown I don't really like that and I want to clean that up so that way we can see the bubbles better I'm gonna use a bucket and a small sponge and just wipe things out rinsing my sponge off in that water because it's convenient good enough I should point out that I only turned off one of the pumps on the two pumps of the skimmer to be able to clean this section. I just needed the water level to drop within the body. There's no reason to shut it off completely when you have two pumps. So I'm gonna go clean the collection cup and I'll be right back. What was I thinking? I should definitely show you what's in this collection cup. So you can kind of see it's the full size of my sink. Here's my hand. It's a big collection cup. I believe this is around 12 inches across. And then here's the inside of the lid with the swabby completely covered in gunk. And this is about, I'm going to say two weeks worth. So it's definitely been doing its job to keep all the skim aid gone. So I'm going to go ahead and clean it up now. I guess I should point out that when you're doing this, you should use your reef only sponge. Don't mix it up with any other sponges in the household. 
This is the one that you're gonna use for your aquarium only. No one in your house can use it. And you should never pick up a different sponge than the one that's designed for your aquarium. All right, the collection cup is now clean. The drip hose, really hard to clean out. Sometimes I'll run a brush down it. Um, I'm not gonna do it this time. Alrighty, it is now cleaned up and ready to go back in. Uh, the squeegee has been used for several years. The motor, like I mentioned before, has been replaced a few times. Just fits right back on top of the collection cup and it's ready to go. Gonna put it back into position. Run this drain hose back down to the waste collector. And then string the power cord for the swabby back over to the apex controller, which activates it as needed throughout the day. Now the swabby is actually turning because I left it turned on during the demonstration. Normally it would have already turned off by now and would resume when it was scheduled to every three hours. The body is now refilling with more air bubbles and water. The next thing I want to explain to you is how to adjust your protein skimmer. But there's some basics we have to cover first. Protein skimmers aren't finicky, but they need to be set up correctly. It matters what depth of water it's standing in. It matters how tall it is under your aquarium. These are factors that need to be figured out whenever you start to build a new system or when you're shopping for a new skimmer. If you have too much water, your skimmer is going to keep overflowing. If it's not high enough, it may be a problem if it's sucking in air, like too much air, instead of just a little bit of air that comes through these Venturi hoses. If the water level keeps varying throughout the day because you're not topping off automatically, the skimmer will keep going crazy. It'll be fine and then it overflows and it's crazy and it's overflowing and then it's normal and you're like, what is going on? And keep in mind too that the weather can also affect a protein skimmer. When it's storming outside or when the barometric pressure changes, the bubbles inside the body can collapse or they can shoot up. And when that happens, this cup fills up very quickly and it can even bubble over like a really messy bubble bath. Now on this skimmer, there's a red knob and this is how I adjust the water height. And one of the things that I try to convey to people when they're trying to adjust their protein skimmer it's like when you're taking a bath or a shower and you adjust the knob slightly to get just the right temperature. This is not a big turn. You don't turn, turn, turn or reverse. You want to just turn maybe an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch, and that will make the water level rise in the neck a little bit higher. If I give it another small turn, you'll see it's rising even more quickly. If I turn it significantly, you're gonna watch this overflow and make a mess. It's even overflowing here. <laughs> so I'll turn that down. It's not necessary, you see what happened. Now I like these very fine bubbles that are happening in the body of the skimmer right now. I'm not gonna find that sweet spot. You can see small bubbles and you can see some larger bubbles because there's some food in the water and I had also cleaned the glass a little bit earlier so it's pulling out some organics right now. But I like to have my bubbles to be right around the neck. You know, maybe with the bottom of the cup on this skimmer, that works out beautifully for me. You find that spot, not quite. And then different times of day, you'll see different bubbles in the neck. We're seeing a significant amount of large bubbles right now. I like them when they're super fine. The finer they are, the more effective they are. So this looks like a good height right now for my protein skimmer. I'm happy with it. I might adjust it just a slight bit less and see what it does. Yeah, that seems to work. I might have to check on it again in 30 minutes or an hour and maybe do a slight twist back and then I'm done with it. And it's gonna be good for the next week. It's not like you have to keep changing it all the time. If you do, something is changing in your system and it's not cooperating the way it's supposed to. It's supposed to operate very easily. Over the years, I've seen a lot of different types of protein skimmers on the market. I've seen cheap ones, I've seen junk, I've seen good quality ones, I've seen some that are insanely expensive. Uh, I'm not one to 
declare what your budget should be, but there's an old saying that's been around for quite some time that said, buy the most expensive skimmer you can afford. When I bought this skimmer back in 2004, it cost me $800. The one that I'm gonna try out today, 11 years later, it's marketed or retailing at $1,200. It's a lot of money, but I used this for 11 years. I had to replace the pumps on it, I think, I think I replaced three pumps on it over the entire duration I've had it. It came with Cedra pumps and now it's using Eheim pumps and they work great. And the Swabby, like I told you, that was an extra thing I added. That was extra money, but it made it easier for me to take care of the tank. So I'm very happy with it. If you have a small skimmer that hangs on your aquarium, make sure you keep it really clean. Make sure that you're emptying that collection cup. Keep your wall behind your tank clean. You might even want to put up some vinyl or some kind of protection behind for when those salt creeps hit the wall so it doesn't just erode the wall and destroy the sheetrock. If you have room for a bigger skimmer in your sump, great, but don't go so big that it overpowers the system. I've seen a lot of skimmer, uh, a lot of people over the years are trying to get super large skimmers. Well, years ago, the skimmers weren't any good. <laughs> I mean, they were okay, but it's like you had a tank that was 100 gallons and it's a get a skimmer for 300 gallons, that way it'll keep up. I don't think that's the case anymore. I think manufacturers are a lot closer in their recommendation to what you need for your reef. When I told them I wanted to test a skimmer for my tank, I said I needed something that could handle 450 gallons of water. And this skimmer is brand new to market. I believe there's only been four made and I have one of them. Now, this one here, I wasn't positive it would actually do well with this tank. I had it on my 280 gallon originally and it did great. And then I had it on the 400 and the 400 leaked and it went on to a couple of holding vats and it was taking life support for seven months. Then I put it, uh, there was a time when I had to set up a 215 gallon tank with this same sump and skimmer and it took care of the life support for that tank that was sitting in that wall right there. And now I'm back to my 400. We're on the 23rd month of this tank being set up. I have no reason to doubt the skimmer can keep up. It's doing perfectly. But I would really like to try something new, uh, something from this decade. And so when I was asked if I would be willing to try it, I jumped at the chance. I've had a few companies over the years ask me, would you please put your, you know, this skimmer under your tank? And you know, I said, well, if it's big enough to handle it, yes. And if they weren't willing to give me a big enough skimmer, I just had to pass because what was the point? How could I actually test it when it's underrated? You know, if it's for like a 100 or 200 gallon tank and I'm putting on 450 gallons of liquid volume, it's not going to be a good test. It'll just be a disaster. So I'm really happy that NIOS decided that they'd let me try this out. And I am going to be trying this skimmer for a couple of months and give you guys feedback of what I think. I will now go ahead and unpack it so we can see what it looks like. As you can see, I've got some unpacking to do. Let's see what's in here. Since this is a prototype, the official packaging has not happened yet. And there's not even instructions on how to set it up. I basically have to follow a series of pictures that were provided for me so I can see how it all goes together. There's the lid. I hope it works with a waste collector. I'm not even sure about that yet. I'm so used to it now, I almost hate to go without it. And a bubble plate. Here are the two pumps. These pumps are actually going to be inside the body of the skimmer instead of next to it. So when they have to be maintained or cleaned, you have to take the skimmer apart to get them out. And I like that there's two pumps because I like to turn off one pump when the skimmer is full and it needs to be drained. And I do see a hose, so it will work with a waste collector and that's good news. Okay. That's what I see so far. I still have to put it all together. But I am excited and I will definitely tell you guys how it goes and I'll show you some pictures of it installed and I hope to show you some pictures of it running. Wait, I forgot to tell you one more thing. I got a brand new return pump. This one here is the Vectra L1 or what I like to call the large one. 
This comes from Ecotech Marine. It uses the Quiet Drive driver. It's using EcoSmart Live to communicate and program it. It doesn't just turn on and off. I am so excited about this. I'm doing a product review about it, but I bought it. So the review is going to be whatever I feel because it's mine. I, um, I was sold on it instantly, and I'll tell you why. Number one, every night when I feed my reef, I turn off the return pump. And that way the food stays in the display. Well, this will slow the return pump way, way down to where it's barely trickling over the top and draining down into the sump. So the food stays in the display, and then after a while, it ramps back up again to where everything's the way I want it to be. I believe you can do surges with it and stuff like that. I still have to learn. I just wanted it for this reason specifically. It works for the battery backup. So when my power goes out, this guy keeps running. I might get a few hours out of it because it connects up to a Ecotech battery backup with a 24 volt cable. Now, currently the Vortex use 12 volt cables, so that's a special wire that's coming out really soon. And when I hook this up, it'll keep running nonstop. So I'll have return pump going through my sump. I'll have Vortex pumps moving water through the display, all on batteries. And then if it's a really long extended power outage, I'll pull out the generator. But at least when I'm traveling, I know that my tank is okay for a few more extra hours and it doesn't just sit there idly hoping that things are going to work out or making me call a tank setter saying, please rescue my reef. Because <laughs> it's really awkward. Like, can you go to my house? It's 2 a.m. and I got this text saying that the power's out. When the power might be back? I don't even know. So I am very excited about this. Now, I do want to tell you one thing. Yes, I have a brand new pump. Yes, I have a brand new skimmer to play with. But I'm about to leave town. And I'm going to be gone for like three or four days. I'm back for two days, and I'm gone again for a few days. And I won't make big changes on my reef when I'm about to leave town, because that's when things go wrong. So leave everything the way it's supposed to be. Don't change a thing when you're leaving town. When you come home, then, and you can be around your tank all the time, hook up your new toys. Make those big changes. Kill cyano. Do whatever it is you got to do with your tank. But don't make those changes right before you leave town, because invariably something bad is going to happen. I want to thank you guys for tuning in this week and enjoying the video and for subscribing and sharing and commenting. I love your comments. Actually, uh, feel free to ask your questions. I do my best to answer them all. And if you're watching this and you're not on YouTube, come over to YouTube and that way you can ask me your questions. Uh, I was hoping Spock might swim into this shot, but apparently she's not going to play along. Silly fish. There's Crown Royal. Kind of. Dun -dun. Dun -dun -dun. She swam away. All right, see you guys next week.